Well, hello, it's Valerie here. I've been uh, sitting and mulling over the responses that I'm getting to a post that I put out yesterday about, well, I said it's the iceberg of burnout, but there are these different layers when we're actually feeling exhausted and pushed. And that my observation that for many of the people who come to see me for individual work, at that stage where burnout has really come at a high cost, high personal cost, high physical cost, um, and high well emotional, mental health have been significantly impacted, <clears throat> don't actually realize that they were in that initial stages, developing stages early on. And I got to thinking about um, about this because someone whom I've been chatting with who's had an experience with burnout said to me, you know, I didn't actually realize that I was burnt out until after the fact, until really significant things started to happen to me. And I thought, hey, that's a really common thing that I hear as well, right? Which is why I'm so big on coming in early because when you come in early, the, the cost to what it takes out of you is actually far less. So straight to the chase, let me tell you what I observe. <clears throat> what does it look like? Well, first of all, you're starting to, uh, you, you may not see the changes in you. That's the first thing to say. You're not going to notice it. You might notice that other people start to show concern about you. Are you okay? You're looking tired. You're looking exhausted. And that's going to annoy you. That's going to annoy you because when you're burning out, uh, that's the kind of message that you want to avoid because it's what you're avoiding telling yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm lazy if I rest. There's so much to do. I feel guilty. So quit annoying me by telling me that I have to rest because if it was that simple, I would be doing it. The underlying message of that to ourselves is usually that I haven't done enough. I'm failing and I'm drowning because I haven't done enough and so I have to do more. The second thing you might notice is that people start to be distant from you. Uh, the last time you actually had a meaningful conversation with someone you can't remember, um, you seem to find yourself constantly either uh, irritated or frustrated or significantly feeling are guilty around your loved ones because you don't have enough time with them, you don't feel like you're having enough time with them, you don't feel like you're making a difference. But the thing is, you still keep going because you don't know anywhere how else to do it. And then you get into this loop where you then feel discouraged and despondent because it doesn't seem to be making a difference. So it must be you. People are actually starting to fall off the wagon. Your relationships are crumbling because you're just not doing enough. And if you can just hang on, and if everybody could just hang on for the next week or the next month, the next 12 months, the next 18 months, the next 36 months, it'll turn the corner and we'll get, we'll get that, the connection and the energy back. The next thing. When you do go on holidays, you probably crash. You probably feel sick. Um, you probably feel uh, tired. Um, the thoughts start to crowd into your head that because you stopped to rest, you're now actually feeling worse. And so there's a push then to just get back to the hustle because maybe, um, maybe this rest thing is not for you uh, because you just need to keep going. People also tell me that simple things start to feel like you're going through a meniscus. Uh, that at the time when they look back, they were moving slower, making decisions slower, actually having to laboriously do the things that should take them or used to take them a lot quicker. What to eat, what to put on, um, how to do this, where to put things in the office, where to do things, how to do things at home. Those sorts of decisions that fire up generally quicker seem to be getting slower. And then here's the thing. You think it's hay fever. You think maybe it's just headache because you had too much chocolate. You start to think maybe it's because you're not drinking enough water. But here's the thing, the physical symptoms, the headaches, the tension in your muscle, the stomach stuff, the bowel stuff, 
starts off like this and then just keeps going with no relief and it's getting incrementally more and more and more. You might also start to notice that the messages that you tell yourself about being able to do things are getting harder to believe. It's just so much harder to believe that you're doing things right. It's harder to come up with the positive things in your world. It's harder to actually celebrate uh, the things that are going well. And every day when you wake up, if you've even had good sleep, the first thing on your mind is like a startled reflex of, <gasps> I've got all this stuff to do. <clears throat> and the thing about your sleep, <clears throat> you're probably waking up through the night, three o'clock, maybe five o'clock, not being able to fall asleep. And maybe you put it down to just, it's a phase and it's a season. Things are really hectic right now. But here's the thing, even when things are really hectic and even if things are going um, you know, in, in accelerate mode, we can still have quality of sleep. When our sleep is impacted that much on a daily, weekly, relentless pattern, and that becomes your new normal, maybe something is actually going on. So when you actually put the picture together, it's these incremental changes in your energy levels, in your sense of confidence, and in your connections with people that I use the term quite normal folks this ain't normal there's actually a book called that you can google it it's kind of hilarious folks that ain't normal when you start to actually look at your world and you start to actually project that onto if you were seeing that in someone else right if you had the superpowers to travel over to your neighbor's house right over there and sit and watch and observe them and you were watching you in motion day after day week after week and you look back and you look at that and you say that's normal or well, folks that ain't normal if you're starting to to tick off some of these boxes and you're starting to realize that guilt feelings of failure feelings of worthlessness uh, not actually feeling resource or energy when you wake up in the morning not having good quality sleep when you go to, when you actually go on holiday you come you, yeah you might have a moment of relief it lasts for maybe three days and then all that worry and stuff comes back. If you're having physical symptoms that just seem to have been hanging on for a lot longer than they used to, to be, and if the messages that you're telling yourself, really you wouldn't, you wouldn't wish it on your enemy or on any loved one, both ways, right? Maybe you're actually stepping into burnout's way. Don't wait too long. I've talked about the SBS Insight episode that was on a couple of months ago and inevitably just about every single person who had been through significant burnout had their physical health impacted, right? Um, like I said, it could start with things like your hair falling out or sores or ulcers or headaches or migraines, tension in your body to actually wear and tear stuff like adrenal fatigue, not actually being able to get out of bed. You don't want to wait till that crash factor. You want to get in early. Right? But it's so much uh, easier and, and so much less chaos on you and your world when you get in earlier. Resource Me 2020 is a program that I'm running. I'm running it live this time. Uh, what it means is that my commitment to anybody who signs up and starts this with me Thursday, February 20th, will have access to me for 12 weeks. Um, it's one of the sad, great sadness and maybe frustrations in my world that when I do individual work, I can only do that many in a week, right? And, and I can't do any more. But when I hop on online like this, I'm actually in an environment where I'm fairly relaxed and chilled. This is my home study in my home office. And I'm dedicated to journeying with you at, online for 12 weeks answering whatever questions you have of me walking you through what i do personally what i do for my clients and their individual lives and what i even do with my team as i manage a group of mental health practitioners what is uh, the actual steps and strategies and skills to get yourself out of that from my experience many people who've gone through this I actually feel a lot revived just doing the first module. It's fairly interesting. It's almost like this hope, right? That, oh, just even the first module gets you to think about, you know, 
how you've been viewing uh, your schedules and your routines and even just making one shift can often unlock the creativity that you actually really need it to get going. And what more if you've got 12 weeks just tucked under your belt uh, to have someone journey and walk with you and, and fine tune some of these things. So my hope is that if you have listened to this and if you've recognized that, boy, that's sounding a lot like me, maybe I am in early stages burnout. Maybe I've actually been sitting three, six, 12 months into it. Take, take the step now and, and journey with me and walk with me for 12 weeks and let's actually get you to a resource 2020. Okay, everybody, take care.